Whether you believe climate change is happening or not, we know that water is the most precious resource we have in the West, hands down. Having that cold, clean water available at the end of the year is the only way that humans in the West are going to make it. French Gulch is a tributary of French Creek and it's located on the Mount Hagen Wildlife Management Area in southwest Montana and it's perched up high on the Continental Divide. I mean, this is the headwaters of the Missouri Basin. So this water enters the big hole and then the big hole of course flows down into the Beaverhead, into the Jefferson, into the Missouri. This upper big hole area has a lot of mining history and this area was one of those areas severely impacted. In the 1800s, late 1800s, it was discovered that gold and later silver were there. Copper was hit in Butte. Edison invented the light bulb. The United States was able to electrify and win World War II because of this extractive work that happened in this drainage. We moved into having the Anaconda smelter trying to pull resources from that Mount Hagen area down into Anaconda to support this mining and smelting operations. A lot of it was heavily logged by the Anaconda company. Sulfur dioxide and arsenic from the smelter killed an awful lot of the, the timber. This country was just barren and when it would rain the creek would run white. We did run cattle up here for a number of years. There was a lot of sediment washed through uh, French Gulch and, uh, you know, and a lot of wasted water that just kind of ran out everywhere. The stream, because of plaster mining, is very straight, which makes it a higher gradient sort of system. From a fish perspective, a stream that looks like French Gulch should be a meandering stream channel and there should be abundant spawning areas in there. But in the case of French Gulch, there's very limited spawning areas because the stream is so straight, all those smaller substrates that fish use to spawn in get flushed out. I mean, basically the water was just leaving the landscape pretty much as fast as possible. So that water late season is gone. There's no riparian or floodplain habitat to speak of in French Gulch uh, before we started. So all of that potential habitat for wildlife was non-existent. This was the extent of the stream before, and floodplain. So it was just straight shot. Someone will probably walk by here and be like, oh, this is an old road bed. It's like, no, no, this is where the stream flowed for 150 years. <laughs> Overall, the entire wildlife management area really took a pretty hard hit environmentally. I'm equally like horrified and fascinated <laughs> at the ingenuity that was involved. I mean, like people, there was some brilliant problem solving happened to be able to destroy something like that. So you can't blame sort of what happened and why it happened, but it's definitely a challenge dealing with how to put things back together. When we have these systems where the vegetation is missing, uh, there aren't meanders in the stream, and the water kind of comes off the mountain and shoots down to the river and then it's gone, we're not, we're not making best use of that water, and the entire ecological system is not functioning the way that it was designed to. Without intervention, natural processes weren't likely to restore it to a, a functioning state to support the fisheries and the aquatic habitats that would have been here historically. These restoration projects are a great opportunity to improve the water, improve the fishery, and also put the landscape back the way that it should be. It's November 9th, we're at French Gulch in the upper Big Hole Valley in the Mount Hagen Wildlife Management Area. And it's winter is here already. And we got guys hard at work here. Moving the amount of dirt that got moved in this project was monumental. I mean, there was a lot of earthwork that happened. So the project moved over 30,000 cubic yards of mine tailings out of the floodplain. So it looks like a bomb goes off when you're building this. I mean, it's just mud and dirt and rough construction. Once we had created the fresh slate, then I think the artistry of the project comes in where we're actually creating and designing a flowing and meandering channel, deciding where to cut in pools and floodplain features that will stop sediment, hold water. We created 7,400 feet of new stream channel, pools, woody debris habitat, and bioengineered willow lifts on almost every bank to minimize sedimentation from the road into the stream. After the contractor comes in and 
creates that meandering stream, then the revegetation comes in and we spread 200 pounds of wetland seed and there were over 30,000 willow stakes and whips used in the construction of the project. It wouldn't be a sufficient enough restoration if we tried to just carve a stream channel inside of a totally degraded system. We wanted to create a fully functioning ecosystem, hydrologically functioning, where groundwater and surface water are interacting and exchanging, where the wetland plants, the, the willows, the rushes, the sedges, all of these plants not only uh, thrive in wetter conditions, they're the plants that attract the songbirds. The wet features are places for tadpoles and amphibians and you know other critters that depend on these wet habitats to thrive. And so really resetting the system back to zero was the only way that we saw to do this work. What we're hoping to demonstrate here is that you don't have to control every inch of your restoration project. Designing deformability into the project is the direction we need to go. Basically jump-starting ecological processes, letting nature fix itself, and just giving nature enough juice to get started on her own natural recovery. Now the stream has a series of meanders in it, has a series of wetlands, it has beautiful riparian vegetation, lots of different species. Now the entire drainage kind of soaks it in, holds those wetlands, holds those ponds, and it'll slowly trickle out uh, later into the year. If water is our energy, our life source, right, then the soil is our battery for water. So if we can put that water, when it's abundant, on the landscape, let it charge up our battery, we'll have that water later in the season. And so all the water storage and water quality benefits that uh, occur as a result of this project will trickle down and accumulate into the entire basin. I try to think of the larger picture and you know, what do you want to leave, you know, and can we make things better? Without the watershed committee, this project would look very, very different than how it turned out in the end. The opportunity to go into French Gulch and do this work um, fed a lot of different goals for a lot of different people. We had 12 different funders, 21 different funding agreements over that five year period of just over a million dollar project. With the Big Hole Committee on board with a project, you get a lot of stakeholder interest and the, the multiple benefits of the project start coming out. To get together and try to show everybody that ranchers do care about the river and do want to help the river and to projects and things like this give us all more water. The sportsmen, the ranchers, the recreationists, and the project is to be very proud of. By working together with the Big Hole Watershed Committee and Fish, Wildlife, and Parks, we could really rebuild the stream so that it could store the most water provide the cleanest water quality, provide really good habitat for native fish, and also provide beautiful recreation opportunities for folks that like to go and visit that Mount Hagen Wildlife Management Area. So to me, restoration is like that one tool that we all have to right some wrongs to the resource, to the environment. It feels good. Getting this project done really felt like you put a lot of effort in, but you did it on a pretty large scale and left a really big impact. Fun to work with you. Always. More to come. More to come, heck yeah.